Ah, well, glory to Vishnu, Shiva, and Rishnu, everyone, and welcome to my kind of little summary episode, you know, kind of things that, you know, kind of happen in this Let's Play that we can talk about and kind of go over and just, I want to make sure this is kind of one of those endings that, you know, brings the Let's Play to a whole, to a close, so, you know, I'm going to try to get to everything. I'm going to try to get to everything that I thought was very important in this Let's Play and, you know, kind of address some stuff and we're just going to see what happens. We're just, just going to see what happens because I think this was a pretty interesting Let's Play, so, yeah. Well, let's begin with the prequel, I guess, because there's always a prequel to everything. Um, this Let's Play was founded after my my uh, Punjab efforts had had arisen from a failure and you know what, I wanted to decide to do a, I still wanted to do an Indian Let's Play, so I was like, you know what? I tried it the I tried it the legit way of trying to form India. It was hard, and I probably could do it if I had. Well, now with like these new patches and stuff, I'm really debating if you can really form India. Like, with the fact that not even like I thought the Great Power modifier would instantly give it to you, but I realize it's 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 a little bit different now. But anyways, um, I said you know what I'm gonna form Jim. I'm gonna form the Great Indian Empire no matter what, and so. Basically, I went into Indi Brit Britain's uh, interface and went into, went into politics and decisions and, you know, released nations and just freed India. A very simple decision that resulted in, you know, an expansion of about this big, I think? This big? Yeah, just about this big. And we had so many other sub-states in, in this that it was quite, I bet for you guys, it was really quite annoying to look at. It was like, ugh! Doesn't look at that. And I actually came up with this very hit. Um, one of our. I think one of our. One of my fans actually asked me why does it look so bad. And I came up with this really, really clever, clever, clever history alteration where I basically said that those were basically um, the British people's own little territory inside of India after there was this peaceful revolution inside of India and all this kind of serious stuff. If you want to look back on it, I. It was like some kind of comment that I did and it's. It's a pretty expansive one, but I think it was like episode one or two, maybe eight. I don't know. It's one. It's between episode one and eight, and it has this comment where I was just I explained like the backstory of how I think this universe came about, and it was pretty interesting. Anyways, through the let's play, it it was pretty much a you know first we had to do this first stereotypical stereotypical thing, which is we had to civilize, which civilizing you know in and of itself is a hard process. Um, I've civilized, like, different nations before, I've civilized many times in many different nations, and India, on the rating to 1 to 10 of civilizing, it really wasn't that hard. I'll give it, like, a 1, no, no, like a 5 out of 10, because it was a little bit difficult, but it was pretty dang easy. I mean, once you got over that, once you got over that hurdle of how to figure out how to civilize and make sure you don't make British or Russia mad, or China for that matter, you basically had a very easy campaign of easygoing, nice, relaxing, you know, playthrough. I mean, the first episode I did was, I basically conquered Punjab to take all this territory that they had. And then, you know, after that, I took over Afghanistan and all this to, like, give me those conquest scores. And I did pretty good. And, you know, it was actually quite entertaining. Um, yeah, and then after civilizing, you know, we basically went a lot, a little bit of time, a little bit, I was a little bit cheapest, I admit it about expanding and going in different directions and you know trying to figure out where I wanted to take the Indian Let's Play and ultimately what I decided is I wanted to focus in more on the actual Asia aspect than the actual you know colonizational aspect because what we wanted to do was create our own empire land wise I mean I didn't really I didn't really care about naval advancement that much in India in fact it's kind of funny, at the end of the Let's Play, while everything else is almost near tech, Navy is almost completely not even filled. I have so much, the Indians have so much to learn from naval warfare, it's insane. Like, if it, if it really, if war really did come down to just basically naval warfare in our land, we would have probably lost so much long ago, because our Navy just stinks. Um, but not in, we just neglected it so long that it basically became impossible for us to catch up. But anyways, yeah, after... After a little bit, and after a little bit of annexing these little tiny states, and after our first major war with Britain, 
See, that's the key, guys. The first major war of Britain, the one we won, the first major one we won, that was the kind of turning point in this year of our kind of Indian Let's Play. It kind of separated us from the regular, average, you know, Asian colony that might, or Asian, Asian minor that might become a great power to a great power. It really symbolized that we were what we were, a great and utterly fantastic nation. We took the British out of the Indian Ocean. I mean, it may not have happened in that war specifically, but by the end of this Let's Play, I would say, even though we don't have any ships in the water, we have destroyed the British Army's ability to form anything in this region. Um, we are just the dominant powers. We are just the most powerful people in this Let's Play. Um, and we did it through grit, we did it through learning, we did it through, you know, just pure expertise. It was a great Let's Play, and, you know, we got ourselves into major engagements all the time. We were, well, major engagements around our area. We didn't really care about the Europeans' mess of an empire over here. <laughs> the Europeans, everyone. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, we did our own little thing for a while, became our own, like I said, we became our own solidified industrial power. People may have still mocked us at this point, as India. I don't deny there were still some European powers that were still snickering about the little, the little arrow down there. Or the little, um... Sorry, I wanted to wait for that song to finish because that was an awesome song. Um, that little, that little diamond in the, that little diamond of, the little destructive coal mine or something like that. I don't know. I don't know any other insulting names you could call Indian people because I'm a very much non-insulting person, guys. I'd like you to understand that right now. I'm a very non-insulting person, so insults do not come easy for me. Um, anyways, yeah, all the European powers. I bet you anything was still not thinking much of. Of India, even when we became a great power, they were probably still discriminating against us and thinking that we weren't that great. Well, guess what, guys? We had this major war, the first great war that we fought in. It was technically the second great war, I think, and it was, you know, fought pretty well. And you know, ultimately, we were winning that war. I won't even deny. The Germans were coming after, you know, the Russians and all this kind of jazz. We were still fighting. Like, I mean, we did a major thing. Cause if you guys remember at this point, and I'll put this in the and I'll put this in a very good perspective. China had just formed at this point. China also, ooh, China. China probably one of the biggest threats in this let's play. Cause they were just so economically powerful. If they had fully united, if we kept them fully united, they would have been a big threat to us. They had fully united and we didn't like that idea. And we didn't like them right next to us, and they were going to crush our Russian neighbors, so we started a great war. And we basically, as India, who don't, who I already know did not have as big of a military, you know, military manpower as the Chinese, took the Chinese and put them to their knees. We, oh no, 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 the reason why the Chinese attacked us, I remember why, was also because we own this region right here. Because we had just started expanding into their land, and they didn't quite own all that, they just owned this. But yeah, it still shows. We destroyed the Chinese alliance, and then even the troops that were in here, we took them back, and then pushed our troops all the way over here. Our first... I think this was just a training war, guys, honestly. This taught us how to fight in the Russian land, and how to coordinate in the Russian land. Because we were about to fight the Germans hardcore, I and mean, we already had troops lined up in a good formation, in solid formation, ready to go push back the Germans and conquer everything for us. But as you guys know, that war was taken from us. From a stupid AI's decision to declare peace and harmony. It was taken from us. And look at that. We got nothing from that war. We got absolutely nothing. Well, I wouldn't like to say absolutely nothing, because after that, the Chinese did completely collapse. And, you know, through that, we just took a lot of their land out of revenge. Because we hated the Chinese after this point. Because they were one of the reasons, they were, may have not been the main reason why we fell, or why everything just, like, randomly happened to us. 
it was probably the mainly the fault of the Russians for giving up so quickly and then making Great Britain give up on us and all that kind of stuff. That was probably the reason why we gave up, but it was still angry nonetheless that the, they gave up and made us have to like pay war, but war reparations to another nation that we didn't, we should not have had to. I also don't think we should have had to have paid war reparations. We had won that war. We should not have been paid. But sadly we did, and so, I don't know. That war will always be remembered as the war that caused bloodshed. Instead of peace, it caused bloodshed. And really didn't solve any of the problems that we were experiencing in India, and we needed to resolve. Because India was the hotspot of the world. I mean, other places in Europe were hotspots, but India was also a hotspot, since we were on more land. So after that point, you know, after we had done some couple annexations, which... Burma, best vassal ever. Like, if there was a vassal of the year award, this guy should win it instantly. This country was awesome to have all, all this time. It was a great decision of us to go annex these. Oh, not to annex these guys, but to just subjugate them. And I wish it would have discovered... Uh, and I wish it would have discovered that loophole I found with the whole releasing nations thing a lot quicker. That would have helped us out so quickly in the beginning of the game. Just like release a nation, then we could go conquer more anyways. But... After that point, guys, you know, there became this kind of tension building up between the Indian people and the rest of the world. We hated the Russians for what they had done to us, kind of backstabbed us for what they had done. We hated the British. We hated the British because they owned land that we wanted. They owned still some land inside of here. They, the British should have been out by now. They knew that the term of contract was up and they should have been out. We also hated the fact that we were still considered Basically what that war proved to us the first one was is that we were in still inferior to the to the Europeans. They still did not think of us as much. So you know what? India was sick of it. So in a couple years, in 1928, India took the action and declared it is going to conquer back its homelands. And it, it declared a peaceful and not well not really peaceful, just a annexation of this country. Because I don't know how to pronounce it, and it, I've already had people correct me in comments, so I'm going to remain quiet about it. Um, and this is the war that we have just recently fought. Now, we fought that war with big gusto. We fought that war with craziness. Even though the odds were stacked against us, we had the Russians joining against us. We had the Austrians joining against us. We had... We had the British joining in against us. We had the Portuguese joining against us. We had major powers around the world joining against us. But you know what? In the end, we stormed the we stormed Siberia. We stormed the foothills of Uzbek, or I don't know what I think these are called the Ursa Mountains, and we definitely stormed Saint Petersburg. We went across European land. And took their, we took their rivers, we took their fortresses, we took their weapons, we took everything from them. We dominated in the European sphere. We had never had any contact really with them. And we destroyed them. We proved that India, as I've said before, was the dominant nation. There was no, there was no doubt in the minds of anyone after this war that India was a top dog. We were the ones to be feared across the world. We were the ones that enforced everything. We are the leaders. We are the ones that deserve respect. And the European dogs understood who their master was after this. And after this, India remained at the top of its game, looking to a new future looking to a better place, a better role in humanity's sake, and in a better society that it will form. This is the India we leave today, everyone. So, before I leave, I'm going to show you guys all the map mode. Region map mode doesn't really matter. Revolutionary risk. Yeah, I know, most of my country is basically revolutionary. Administrative-wise, we have this. Colonial map mode, doesn't really that important. Recruitment map mode, not really that important. National focus map mode. All these ship lines I could build. 
OG outputs. Wow, there's so many. Just I'll go in closely so you guys can see these all. Yeah. Yeah, look at all those. Look at all those. I mean, we had a pretty good amount of oil in our country due to all the stuff we conquered. So I felt pretty good at the end of that. Migration wise, a lot of people are leaving us to go to the US of A. Um, I wonder if there's actually a good population of United States people that are uh, Chinese. Probably not. And if they were, they'd probably be in like Chinatown or uh, Indian Town. Whatever they would call it in, in New York. It doesn't like really seem like it. Seems like most of these guys are Yankees still. So that theory is already debunked. Anyways, um, what else? Political map mode. You guys can see all the political parties. Um, America vastly liberal. Um, Brazil vastly conservative. Um, Austria might turn socialist. Then us, we were very much nothing. <laughs> no political party really took power. No one really did anything. In fact, we kept the same exact government this entire time. In fact, look at our look at our reforms. We did absolutely nothing. We still uh, we didn't. We are the least free country in the world. We have no voting. I would manage at the very end of the game keep no voting in everything. No voting. I kept no voting in my 82 million, 86 million people. I kept no voting. That's pretty dang. That's pretty dang cool. Ranking around the world, of course, we're the best. Uh, let's see. Civilization level. I think there's no more uncivilized nations. I think in every one, I think in every single one of this, everyone's civilized. Which is a good sign. This game is getting you know, thing. And then relationship-wise, we're very friendly with China. Really? We're friends with China? Where did we do that? Uh, Russia is, of course, hostile to us. All the African nations in the Middle East, like, love us. Um, Britain doesn't like us, and a lot of these German places do not like us at all. Uh, how does North America like us? North America likes us a good amount. Okay. Crises wise, or a couple crises that could have happened. Our nation was basically united, so it didn't really have many crises. In fact, it's a lot of edge. Population density. Our population is pretty much the world's population, because we had so much. I mean, China does have a good population, but we, I think we had, at the end of the game, more population than China. Yep, at the end of the game, we had more population than China did, and we had a pretty ma good population streak ourselves. Uh, nationalities, still divided, um, really wish there was some kind of, like, subjugation, you know, stuff that we could make, you know, you know, assimilating people more easy, because that's what kind of, I kind of, that's kind of what Victorian values are kind of all about, is just, like, assimilating cultures massively. Okay, anyways, political map mode. Okay, OG output. Is there any other map mode I haven't shown you guys? Supply limit? Yeah. <laughs> sphere of influence. Now, this is pretty interesting. Look at our sphere of influence. We stretch a good amount of ways. In fact, at one point, we own Turkey. Spanish seem. The French seem to be basically dominating the Mediterranean. Not. I don't really care. <laughs> and then, I think. The British lost control over all the clusters over here. Rhodonesia actually got free from the British? Dude, I think this is like the only in Wait. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say, dude, this is like the only independent African country down here. Then I was like, wait a minute. Oh, all these guys are free too, so. These three are the only independent African countries down here. That's pretty cool. And then infrastructure-wise, we basically upgrade all our infrastructure by the end of the game. And... Yeah, I, yeah, I think I've gone into great length about what the actual video was, so I think it's time to end this game. With our final elections, guys, fascists finished out with 18.41, reactionary 16.79, conservatives 7.3, I mean, conservatives were the guys who were in power, they only had 7.3% of the Congress. Socialism took a lot, 21.44%, yet they could still, they had the communists had more than we did in power, and yet we still did not allow them to do anything. We were terrible people, so at the very end of the game, my score was 4,871. Not necessarily the, not necessarily better than my French campaign, but still a good, still a good ledger, and then all these other places, all these things happened, and then Brazil, Brazil, dang Brazil, you were very close to becoming a great power again. In fact, 
Just a couple more points, and then Ireland, oh, Ireland for me, that was an amazing event. Russia's almost dead, like, they are almost to a, just a civilized nation. All right, I'm going to go quickly through the ledger, guys, because um, last time I did this with my French campaign, I think I took way too long in doing this. So this time I'm just going to go quickly. So these guys are the uncivilized nations still. These guys are partly westernized nations. Uh, provinces, let's see. Who owned the most provinces population-wise? We did. Uh, Provinces-wise, Russia did, but we were second. Fashion-wise, it was the USA. Or factory-wise, I mean, we only owned about 100 cent. I mean, comparatively, the just, just to give you an example, I mean... Again, the USA can probably raise the most factories out of anyone in the game, unless the Germans have united. Um, but considering we had 175 factories and we're doing so good, that's pretty good. So literacy rate, we aren't that great. Like, our literacy in this game was pretty much dead bad. We did not focus on literacy much, and we really didn't care about literacy much. Leadership-wise, we are the best. Brigades-wise, the USA is the best, but I guarantee if we'd actually gained enough ships, not enough ships. If we actually had enough time, we would have overpassed this number by a lot. I mean, you guys saw how much we could have raised. It was insane. Ships-wise, yeah, of course, the French beat us, and all these other countries beat us. Yeah. Third-wise, okay, governments. Uh, let's just see. How many absolute monarchies are there at the end of the game besides just us? Uh, there's actually a fair bit amount, but mm, Austria is still... Wow, I didn't know Austria is still... An absolute monarchy, and let's see—is any vast majority? No, it seems like everyone was bas basically spread out among all the different countries. Fascism took a big chunk. The Prussian Constitution took a big chunk. All right. Um, let's see. Voting franchises. No voting. Whoo! There are a ton of nations that didn't allow voting. China didn't allow voting. All right. That's kind of scary. We are not a free world. Alright, did anyone... Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, wait. Okay, I was about to say, did anyone not allow slavery? And I was like looking at all these countries and thought they were allowed. I was like, oh my goodness, what the heck happened to the world? Okay, all these countries allowed slavery. Brazil kept slavery to the bare bones. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then nothing else over here really that important. Uh, no minimum wage. I, we're the biggest country that never allowed that. Yep. <laughs> biggest country to never allow minimum wage. Well, actually, yes, we're the biggest country to never allowed minimum wage. That's something to be proud of. Alright, aristocrats. Let's see where we rank. Second in aristocrats. First in artisans. Bureaucrats, we are fifth. Uh, we actually have the most capitalist? Really? We had the most clergy, we had the most... We did not have the most craftsmen. In fact, we're not even close to that number. Uh, in terms of workers, we had only 4.54 million compared to the USA's big gigantic number. All right, We had the most farmers, we had the most miners, we had the most admirals. Slaves? Who had the most slaves? Brazil. Sad, sad day for Brazil. Then we had the most army men. All right. Total population of our total regions. The biggest population was 2.0 Kunzu. Of uh, religion and all this other stuff. Okay. Province population. Production. What was our biggest income province? Taijun from Saxai. That was our biggest import province. And it's not even of Indian descent. The first Indian. I think this is actually the first Indian province. And it's not even making us any money. That makes me feel sad. So factory output, the biggest income was a glass factory and bill here. May has 471 income. Employed, oh my goodness, that's a 140k. True, what? That's insane. Okay, and yeah, and then all these other countries made some good amount of money too. Prices, history, ammunition, production. I mean, we did a lot of stuff. Yeah. That's a lot of good conjunctable mess. Um, nation ranking, and there. Well, that was quick, everyone. So, guys, that was my Indian campaign. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it was a lot of fun for you guys. And for the final time, everyone, if you guys want to say it with me, I won't mind. But glory to Vishnu.
Shiva, and the Vishnu. And goodbye to the Indian campaign. Now, don't forget to vote, guys, on your next nation you want me to play as. Um, I probably won't be playing it a Victorian 2 Let's Play until one of my other series, like EU4 finishes or my, uh, you know, Total War series finishes. But, you know, keep in the back of your head of what you want me to do next. And, you know, I just might do it. So, anyways, guys, thank you guys for watching. As I said before, goodbye, India. Good luck. Goodbye. And see you guys next time.